With all the AI news and breakthroughs flying around, you might well have missed the news from Israeli startup DID about their brand new tool. Now they've managed to give ChatGPT a face and a voice. In this video, we'll talk about how the new tool works. We'll talk about some UX improvements that might make things better. And we'll break down why AI avatars might just be the start of a whole new way of interfacing with machines. So it's billed as the world's first app that lets users have a real-time conversation with a digital human. It's ChatGPT as you know it, but with a human-like avatar powered by D slash ID's tech. Alice, as she calls herself, adds a human touch to the before now faceless ChatGPT. She subtly moves and blinks her eyes and her lips are synced with an almost passable AI generated voice. Hey Alice, how's it going? Said Alex, not Alice. Hi, Paul. <laughs> My I've name is corrected. actually Alice, not Alex. But I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. How about you? Is there something I can help you with today? So I'd like to talk to you about the fact that you are the first chatbot to have a voice and a face. I'll just correct the. Uh, I'll just correct the problem there. What's she gonna say? Yes, that's correct. As an AI developed by DID, I am designed to have a voice and a face to make it easier and more comfortable for humans to interact with me. Our developers believe that humanizing AI technology can make it more accessible and user-friendly for a wider range of people. Do you think this is the main way we're going to interact with machines in the future? Now I'm just getting text replies and no vocal reply. I guess she's As still an AI, oh. I believe that having a human-like interface can definitely help bridge the gap between humans and machines. However, there are many other ways that we can interact with machines in the future, such as touchscreens, augmented reality, and virtual reality. It really depends on the specific technology and its intended purpose. Do you think voice is a better way to communicate than typing? As an AI, I don't have personal preferences. But I can tell you that both voice and typing have their own advantages and disadvantages. Voice communication can be more natural and efficient in certain situations, such as when you want to have a conversation with someone on the go, or when you want to convey emotions and tone of voice. Typing, on the other hand, can be more accurate and precise, especially when it comes to spelling and grammar. It also offers the advantage of being able to easily save and share written messages. Ultimately, it depends on the context and the situation at hand. Tell me a joke. Sure, Paul. Here's a joke for you. Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. What a classic. Interesting how she always uses your name as well. So it's been great talking to you. Have a good day. It was great talking to you too, Paul. Now this mix of chatbot and AI avatar feels hugely significant. Sure, nobody's getting fooled that they're talking to a human anytime soon. She's a little bit janky, there's delay problems, and she's far from photorealistic. But arguably, this is a baby step in what's going to be a giant leap in human-computer interaction. So large language models like ChatGPT have given us new ways to naturally communicate with machines via text. They can understand meaning, and they can seamlessly generate responses. Combine that with AI voice tech, humanize it with an avatar, and what we're left with is an absolutely game-changing new way of interacting with machines. What's more, it's just an incredibly low barrier to entry with talking to a computer. If you can speak to another human, then you can speak to an avatar like Alice. That's literally the only barrier to entry here. So there's no clunky computer interface or UX. There's no talking in an abstract machine language or learning to use a clunky computer mouse. The future of interacting with machines is as simple as talking to them. I think Alice serves as a glimpse in what's likely to be a huge shift in the future of human computer interaction. And it's always been a sci-fi staple, let's face it. I grew up watching Holly from Red Dwarf. Holly was the spaceship's dim-witted AI avatar. Also see Cortana in Halo or Vicky in iRobot or just about any other sci-fi that deals with an AI. You don't communicate with the ship's AI via keyboard. You just speak to it. Yeah, I know, we've been here before. What about Alexa? Smart speakers were useful for a bit, but then we just discovered it was a gimmick, and now it just sits in your cupboard, gathering dust. But combine Alexa with natural sounding speech that has the intonation of a human. Power her with GPT, and what you get is a whole new ball game. Now if you take computers with natural language to its conclusion, it seems like we're gonna interface less with individual systems 
and apps, and most likely more with a personal AI avatar. So as a designer of digital products, this is slightly alarming to me. I mean, what does this mean for classic UI interfaces? Will most of our digital interactions occur purely with our AI assistants in the future? There's no need to visit individual apps anymore when your AI can simply pull through what you need via another website or applications, API or service. You can imagine Alice saying, I've booked you an Uber, it's here in five minutes, check the screen if you wanna see more details. Give Alice a long memory and she could build up a worryingly accurate picture of you and your habits, perhaps knowing you better than you do. Now give her access to your calendar and to your wallet and she'll probably be indispensable. She could be your friend, your confidant, your universal source of knowledge, and your personal assistant all in one. But first, Alice is gonna need some UX upgrades. Spend some time talking with Alice and you'll notice some frustrations with the tech. It's not nearly as natural or intuitive as it needs to be right now. I guess the goal here is human levels of interaction. That's our benchmark. So where does Alice sit with that and what needs to improve? Uncanny Valley is the name of the feeling when something's almost human, but not quite. And it gives us a kind of eerie or strange feeling about it. In order for avatars like Alice to feel less creepy and make us feel comfortable talking to them, they're gonna have to move past the Uncanny Valley. At the moment, neither voice or text are prioritized in the UI. So what you get is like a strange mix of both. So in practice, this is like reading subtitles before they've been spoken on screen. A user's preference for voice over chat should be noted and the experience should be adjusted to suit. Now, lengthy replies work really well in ChatGPT. When you're hunting for something, you want a big response, but less so with speech. The conversation just becomes a monologue. Perhaps you're just looking to chat and in which case tools should be prompted to tweak their output more for voice for best effect. Now Alice's speech is much better than robotic voices of the past, but it's still not perfect. For something truly groundbreaking, see Eleven Labs or Apple's new audiobook narration tools, which really do move us forwards and have a much more groundbreaking realism than we're seeing at the moment. So any noticeable delay or lag kills the user experience. There's understandably a, a lot going on in the background, synthesizing the user's request or speech, generating a response in chat GPT, and then relaying that all back and combining it with an animation, syncing the lips, there's tons going on, but even a second's delay shatters the illusion and simply breaks the magic. So Alice has scored pretty low in this with my testing. Customization, much like shaping a video character at the start of a video game, having the ability to customize Alice into any form you want will result in a more personalized experience. So apparently this is something that is gonna be in the works for future iterations of chat DID. So you can see this in the AI generation tool that they have for pre-made video, which uses stable diffusion to generate characters. Now continuity, it's really annoying when ChatGPT gets wiped and you have to start fresh and all that context is lost. To humanize a conversation, ChatGPT or similar models should ideally be able to retain previous responses and then learn from your preferences. They can't have their memory cleared. When Alice's memory is wiped, you have to start all over again. Imagine having a conversation with them and they just kind of go blank in the middle of it and you have to kind of start all over again. You also need continuity to pick up where you left off and you also need a memory to relate to people and understand them. So I really think we're seeing seismic shifts in the way we interact with machines. Chat DID is the first to market, but we're gonna see many tools like this. They'll be built upon large language models like ChatGPT, and they'll all be fighting for our attention. So ChatGPT has become the fastest growing app to reach 100 million users in just two months. And yet still many people haven't heard of it. Ask your nan, do the nan test. Does she know what ChatGPT is? Additionally, many people have tried it. They like it, they see the value in it, but they simply haven't found a way to integrate it or make it useful in their lives. So I'd argue that making these machines as intuitive as possible could be that huge leap forward in machine and human interaction. It's that ultimate user experience that makes large language models like ChatGPT go potentially stratospheric. There'll be such a low barrier to entry for users and with a huge power of LLMs behind them, a company that truly gets the UX right might just change absolutely everything.